Hello and welcome back for round 16 of RM Fantasy S Experts. I am Chase. I'm Christian. We are the RM Fantasy S Experts. Can you believe it's coming down to the end? <laughs> I just Two can't. Left. I can't figure Tomac out. <laughs> I can't figure still him hung up out, on that? dude. I don't know what's going oh, on. Oh, man. Well, remember, if you're watching this, you can also listen to it in podcast form. Mm-hmm. If you listen to podcasts, you can watch it on YouTube where we break down all the stats, mm-hmm. talk about the riders, give you all the information you need to make your top five picks. If this is your first time tuning in, if you haven't played Arm Fantasy SX before, it's this simple. Go to armfantasysx.com, create your free account, pick your top five plus a wild card, and that enters you to win weekly prizes. And if you just get started, you can always win a weekly prize. There's still 200 prizes up for grabs. So. Still 200. But Denver, the snowy race. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Pretty wild to see that in qualifying. Mm-hmm. But it's come and gone, so let's get right into it. This is our race recap. All right, so for our race recap, dude, it was a pretty exciting race. I enjoyed it. I liked it. The heat race between Tomac and Webb was unreal. I feel <laughs> I like know. it was the main event. That had to be full I could just watch that. Dude, I was more nervous during that whole deal than I was for the main event. I know. Imagine yes. the team managers. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. But when you look at your results, you got Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb, Marvin Muskan, Justin Bogle. Big time. Big time. We talked about this last week in our bye week episode. Mm-hmm. Props to that man. Also, Christian likes to call it the Pit Kit Award. I mean, the man. nobody looks better in the pits than that man. <laughs> you need to check his Instagram out. This yeah, guy's got style for days. I, I love it. Dude. All right. Joey Savacci holding it down fifth place. <clears> and then... Ryan Brees. Out of nowhere. Going from 4th to 14th to land the wild card Fourth place start, dude. If you picked him for your wild card, I'm sure at the start of the race you were thinking, oh, great. Well, we have some stats on who did pick him for the (laughs) wild card, and it wasn't a lot of people. But other than, you know, that that battle in the heat with Cooper and Tomac, anything else stick out to you? I'm more mad at Marv, like I said. I I picked him to win. You picked him to win. He was out Pulls front. a whole shot. He's like seven know. seconds in ahead, ahead. I mean, everybody's picking Tomac, home race. I'm behind in points. I thought that was going to catch me up. Well, when Tomac, I had Tomac to win. He got around Marv. I'm thinking, perfect. I got Tomac. Mm-hmm. I got Marv. No, nope, he fades Webb's back Webb's eight harder. seconds behind, and next thing you know, Webb's in second. Yeah, so that hurt us fantasy-wise. It happens. But anyway, as far as Christian and you and I go, and then Jim and Daniel... I hate to admit it. <laughs> I'm holding the team back. We lost the red I'm plate. dead weight right now. <laughs> I'm just it's hurting right, the dude. team. You could totally redeem yourself. I know. I'm trying to do it weekend. in my home race, Vegas. So Yeah, but I'm user stats, out. we kind of brushed up on those last week. But real quick, Christian, what do we got for those? Well, it was 34 points on average. Total average points is 415 per player. Um, the thing that really got me was Bogle was only in .6 players of top fives. And only wow. .1 had him in that spot. So... You know and Ryan Brees, lowest ever wild card picked, 0.1%. Lower than Cole Martinez was earlier. I think it was something <laughs> really? like 30 people picked him in the wild card. So Jeez. if you're out there, kudos to you. You know what's kind of interesting, too? 28 laps in that main event. A lot of laps. A lot of yeah. laps. I like Could you imagine it. if they're still doing just 20 lap main events? That'd be like a 14-minute race. Oh, I know. It's, so. I think they got it figured out there. So. <laughs> Well, there they are. Those are the user stats. Injuries, let's talk about them real quick. Big Dean one. Wilson. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, that's too bad for him. Ronnie Stewart, Tyler Entignap, Justin Brayton, Chad Reed, Cole Martinez, your boy, mm-hmm. Aaron Plessinger, Vince Freeze, Anderson, Stewart, and Bloss. That's a lot of riders down right now. That is, so. unfortunately. But it's going to be exciting. Oh, you know who's not on here right now? Justin Barsha. Yep, yeah, out for the season. He's going to be out for the season as well. Mm-hmm. Well, there it is. That is your race recap. And now let's talk about it because we are headed into East Rutherford, not New York. (laughs) Don't you dare call it New York. (laughs) Let's talk about it. This is Track Trends. Heading to East Rutherford this round. Don't you dare say New York. It's in New Jersey. (laughs) (laughs) We we skipped East Rutherford. It's hard to say East Rutherford last last year. year. But the last time we were there, some drama unfolded. Things happened. That's when Tomac, if you guys remember... Took the lead right off the start, and that's what he needed because he had just taken the red point mm-hmm. or the red plate. And then what does he do? Has tips a weird over tips corner. over in the corner. Has a weird front end push. Takes his time. Everyone says getting back up. Finished like eighth. Eighth. He stalled again after that. And, and just that was the demise of Eli Tomac in 2017. Yep. So I think Eli is going to need a little retribution going back to this year. He does better when he's behind in points. That we is all know true. that. So, but looking at the track, what do you think? It's it's a big track layout, it's long a rhythm stadium. sections. Yeah, yeah, long start. I noticed two whoop sections. Mm-hmm. We'll see how big they down, are. Though. Yeah, they do. This track, if you remember, it definitely breaks down and gets really rutted out. So, could favor a rider like Marv, who's mm-hmm. very technical, or Tomac, who likes to just hammer those ruts. Just so charge we'll everything. Goes. But anyway, it wasn't on schedule last year. We saw, but your top five in 2017: Dungey one, 
You had Muscan, Anderson, Millsaps, and Baggett. So three other people aren't even around in this so, year, but yeah, it could. Tomac I think like it's going to be said. some good racing. As far as weather goes, it's looking pretty good. 60 for a high, but what you found out was the wind. It says it's supposed to be a really windy day up to 21 miles per hour. We'll hmm. see if it's a factor or not. I don't know if it's going to be a huge deal. It was really windy in Salt Lake yeah. last year. The dust I remember bowl. we were on the podium trying to do a speech <laughs> yeah. and you're sitting there squinting your eyes. It's so dusty. <laughs> yep. But anyway, anyway, it's going to be a good race. I'm excited for it. The track looks good. Weather's going to hold up. So The thing is, is when there's two races to go, something happens. I mean, that's true. We look at last year, Anderson blew his spokes out in Salt Lake, really closed the points up before Vegas. The year before that, like we said, Tomac had an issue. So, so following, the, Webb. following the trend, Webb better be on his toes this weekend. Yeah, I would definitely want to say that. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, speaking <laughs> of Webb, let's talk about him and some of your other top contenders right now so far in the season. Here it is as a top contenders. All right, so for this week's top contenders, kind of surprising, but we only have three riders on the table we're right. talking about. We, we got to take Roxton out. Yeah, and we'll talk why. But we got Cooper Webb, Eli Tomek, Marvin Muscan as your top. Obviously, these are the top three in points. These are going to be, I feel, the hardest picks to make for the next two rounds, hands oh, yeah. down. No doubt. Where do you put these guys? A lot of guys are going to be picking with their hearts because they want Tomek to make that comeback and win. But you got to think logically here. But what's cool is we have the stats on these riders for the last five rounds and their averages, and it's pretty inter interesting what we have. These three guys all have the exact same finish. Overall finish Overall average. finish. Of 2.6. Over the last five rounds. That's right. But you look at average start. <clears throat> Muscan's leading it with 2.2. Then you have Webb at 4.3, and then Tomac at 6. Mm -hmm. Average qualifying, Muscan's even winning that. He's got 2.4 to Webb 7.4. Mm -hmm. Tomac's right in the middle. And then laps led, Marvin Muscan, 74 laps led. <laughs> Compared to Tomac's 41. And then, yeah, and then Webb had 24. So the question is, he has nobody to blame. why can't Marv finish these races yeah, out? He, he got nobody. caught by about eight seconds last week with Webb. He's been leading laps, like, what, three of the last five rounds or Gosh, so? He man. has nobody to blame but himself, I think. I agree. So, or so, get faster in the whoops. Nope. Blame yourself for that, I well, guess. I don't I know. I the round for that. But if we talk about Webb, he leads Tomek right now by 18 points. So, mathematically, he just needs to gain uh, six, six points. points. So, if he wins and Tomek takes sixth, it's over. It's done. Wow. <laughs> that could end it right there. Now, he hasn't finished worse than fourth overall in the last ten main events. That's crazy. So I don't think anyone should be thinking that Cooper Webb's going to play it safe and not finish on the podium because the dude's out there to be on the box. I'm like really win. leaning to put him in first because I think he wants to lock it down before he's, Vegas. He's got the best average finish on the East Coast by 1.83, which is one spot better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. He's gotten the whole shot in three of the six East Coast standard rounds, won two of those races. Yeah. And he's led laps. He's led 47 laps on the East versus 23 on the West. It's it's just lining so up perfect. All for the him numbers to lock are telling us that Cooper Webb would be your top pick. What about Tomac? Eli Tomac, he, he's been on the podium in two of the last three East Rutherford races, so he does well minus there. Minus two years ago. Yeah, minus two years ago, he has won three of the four rounds he's qualified fastest at. Okay. So watch where he's qualifying. Uh, got his first back-to-back -back wins last week, first time since rounds 13 and 14 of last year, so it's been a while. He needs to gain nine and a half points each round, like you said. And he's, but he's finished anywhere from one first to 12th on the East this year, so he's not very consistent. And his average East Coast finish is fifth. Last five overall finishes, one, one, four, three, four. But, man, eight, nine and a half points doesn't sound like a lot, but that's Tomac winning and Webb being outside the top five two yeah. weeks in a row. And that's going to be hard. Not it's going to take very, something happening. Something bad has to happen to mm, Webb. So it's I not agree. like Tomac can just win and Coop gets an average finish because – Otherwise, he's still going to be the championship winner at the end of the season. Yeah. All yeah. right. Now we get to Muscan here, the man who just can't close the deal. We thought uh, it was Roxon at first who couldn't close the deal. However, Muscan has won a couple races. I picked him to win last week. When he was well, out front, I thought I had it. I don't know what's going on. I'm mad dude, at him right Tomac now. Tomac and Denver, fast ball. <laughs> I know. Or, or I, I'm way second. behind yeah, in I points. Don't even know, but. I had to make moves. <laughs> Muscan, he is five points behind Tomac. That puts him 23 behind Webb. So Webb only needs to gain... Three points on Marv, mm -hmm. and it's over it's for him. Done deal. Yep. So he's only beaten Webb and Tomac in two rounds. In the two rounds that he's won. Yeah, there's so not a lot of rounds he beats both of out them. Out of four, yeah, out of fifteen races, only two of them he's beat these guys. Yep. They're always gonna be up there. He's not gonna gain a lot of points. And his average is three point two. His average start of three point two is the best. Is the best, and is the second best. And, and his, yep. And his finishes. Help me out here. His av his averages on the East. 
his start is the best at 3.2, and his finish is the second best. Sometimes the way you type these, I, I get know confused. it can get a little weird. But <laughs> he's so he's solid on the East too. If he's going to win a race, I mean, he's got to do it now. All right. Um, he's only started first in three of the last four standard rounds, and he's only finished exactly where he's qualified two times this year, and both times those were in third. So here, so. here's what I think for Marv. Don't look at his qualifying, or you can look at his qualifying because he finishes one or two spots away from where he's qualified all mm -hmm. year. It's not exactly where. But if the man hole shots, that's pretty much his only chance of winning, the way I see it. Yeah, he's not going to catch and pass those guys. I don't feel comfortable saying So that. You're, you're banking on a hole shot from Marv, kind of, <clears throat> or you look at his qualifying and go off of that as well. Yeah, and just from Webb catching him late in the race last week, not I don't see good. him getting... Confidence, I'm not bringing him anywhere. Confidence has been struck down. <laughs> yeah, he's going third or worse for me this week. Oh, man, it's pretty rough. But anyway, those are your top contenders. But now let's talk about it because we still have two more riders to slide in that top five. Then we're going to talk about the wild card. And also stick around because coming up later on the show, we have a very cool guest caller. Legend. Roger Hayden. A yeah. legend in the Superbike, the MXGP scene, the his brother, Nicky racing. Hayden. The whole family of Haydens is absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. So we're going to get some insight coming up from him. But let's get into it. Here it is. This is our Weekly Spoilers. All right, so before we get into Weekly Spoilers, don't forget at the end of the show, we have a discount code for, Christian? Some ARC Moto socks. So if you need new socks, you're going to get some at a killer price. So stick mm -hmm. around for that. But here on the table, we have five riders. We have broken them down in order that Christian and I like them as far as ranking in the top five. You got Blake Baggett, Joey Savacci, Ken Roxon, Bogle, and Osborne. Mm -hmm. And we have their average finishes too from the last five rounds that we're going to go over. But first, let's talk about Baggett. This man is an East Coast machine. He loves it. He loves it. If you look at his last five overall finishes on the East Coast, two, two, four, two, four. I mean, that's solid. I don't know much now, better than that. His average finish over the last five rounds is actually five, but you're throwing in some West Coast rounds mm -hmm. where so a lot he better. doesn't do as well because his average start on the East is 3.7. On the West, it's 8.5. Mm -hmm. And so going back to East Coast, this man will be my top five. He has two hole shots on the East this year. So, All right. What do you have for Savachi here? Joey Savachi's finished in the top five in three of the seven East Coast rounds. Um, every time he's placed fifth, though, he's been out of the top five the next round, so something to watch there. All right. He has finished in the top five in four of the six East Coast standard rounds. So the man's an East Coast machine like Baggett is. Yep, that's why we're bumping those guys okay. up a lot. Um, he's led 14 laps on the East this year. His last five overall finishes, five, 22, nine, five, and six. Yeah, so his overall finish, though, for the last five is 9.4, but that doesn't really speak truth, I think, about how well he performs on the East Coast tracks. Yeah, he did have a so DNF So between him and Bag, I'm like, I don't know what to do with these two. Well, but. he, uh, you gotta bring this up. Savachi has the fourth best starting average on the East at 4.3. That's mm -hmm. three spots better than Roxon. Wow. On the East, with the next one we're getting Speaking of Ken into. Roxon, his average finish over the last five rounds, seven. This guy has <laughs> not finished in the top five, five out of the last six rounds. I don't know what's going on with this guy. Like, since Daytona, it's been rough. It's just, yeah, it just hasn't <clears throat> been good. He did win East Rutherford in 2016. Mm -hmm. And if you look at his averages, finishes for the year on the East, it's 5.3, but on the West, it's 3.6. So he doesn't do as well mm -hmm. on the East Coast. So, for whatever reason. Uh, this could be one of the very few weeks that I leave Roxanne on my top Well, he's five. taken eighth in the last three East Coast standard rounds. Yeah. So it's like, if he has one bad race, it's one thing, but he's starting to string together a knot. The dominoes, <laughs> Good. man. All right. Like his last five overall finishes, 7, 8, 10, 2, 8. Eesh. Eesh. All right, Justin Bogle, fourth place last week. High fashion. Does he continue that streak? The pit man. <laughs> the pit, the pit kit. kit. Dude, he's looking good in the pits is all I know. So he's gotten fourth twice this year. One of those was in a mud race, mm -hmm. but he won his heat race last week as well. Dude, he was on fire the Dude was on week. fire. And you know when Justin Bogle was feeling good, he also just nails the starts? Yep. So do you think he's a, a safe bet? So he, I just don't, he hasn't had that consistency yet. So he has had good results. But can he back it up two weeks in a row? I don't think the chances are, are as likely as, say, a Savachi or Baggett. But the man's proven he can do it. Yeah, of these two, it's tough for me. Between I know he's been more consistent, but Bogle, when he gets rolling, he gets rolling. I just kind of have a feeling so, with him right now. So between Bogle and Osborne, you'd still go with Bogle? I I like Bogle better this round, yeah. Okay. So. But if you look at Osborne, his average finish over the last five is 6.8. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a lot better than probably people he's would way think. way more consistent. Yeah. And he's finished between fifth and eighth in the last six rounds. He's always there. So he's right on the cusp of breaking that top five pretty much every round. He did it one time on the East already. But he only has one top five so far, and that was in Nashville. So... The last East Coast standard round. 
He's, yeah. he's riding hot, too. But his last overall five finishes, eight, five, six, eight, seven. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe Bogle is a better shot. I just, you, uh, maybe I'm biased. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Those are our weekly spoilers. Cole Shealy is not up here, too. It's kind of one rider I did want to throw out there. But if you look at his average finish over the last five rounds, it's worse than 10. So... <laughs> Yeah. He, he's kind of hit or miss, too. I know he's had some unfortunate luck this year. But those are our weekly spoilers. What do you guys think? Do you think someone else could crack the top five this weekend? Like we saw Bogle do. I mean, Wilson's out. It's going to push Absolutely. You know, another spot up. for these But now guys. let's get right into it because we got to talk about it. Wild card this week is what place? 11th place. Ooh, here it is. Is wild card watch. Wild card this week, 11th place. Yep. We need points, especially me. So this, this matters more than ever. All right. Here's our top picks for this week. We have Justin Hill, Kyle Chisholm, Tyler Bowers, Josh Grant. What do you got on these guys? Your Just, boy Hill, let's hear it. No, he is not my boy. <laughs> Don't ever, no. Justin Hill, the biggest letdown uh, in my season because I was pretty excited for him. But here's, uh, here's when you know you're just having a rough season as a rookie when you had a lot of anticipation. Since Chad Reed and Justin Brayton have crashed out, his average finish has gotten worse. I don't understand that. I really, I, I don't, don't even know. know how you do that. But but he's finished between 10th, 11th, and 12th in three of the last four rounds. Mm -hmm. His average finish of 2019 is 12.62. <laughs> Just good luck picking where it's going to be around there. Oh, gosh. All right, how about for Chisholm here? Kyle Chisholm, uh, since Brayton and Reed crashed out, his average finish has gone from 14.2 to 10.75. Hey, that makes a little more sense. That makes sense. All so right. He's, he's taking full advantage with Wilson <laughs> out, you know, moving him up a little bit more. All right. Took 11th in Denver. He's taken 10th twice, 11th one, 12th, four times this year of all main event gate drops. So all right. I like him. And he's finished between 10th and 12th in the last four main events. Yeah. So I'm really feeling good about Chisholm right now and the next guy we're going to talk about. Now, you said Tyler, Tyler Bowers. Bowers this week was your boy. I like tell me Tyler why, Bowers. But tell me why. He's a good dude. Sometimes, I don't know, I just get the feeling about that guy. You know he's going <laughs> He's gotten the wild card this year already, right? Yeah, and he's so consistent in, like, the range he stays in. All so right. you know he's going to be somewhere around there. Since Braden, Brayton and Reed crashed out, his average has gotten two spots better, down to 14.5. So he's finished 13th overall in the last three main events, and his best overall for gate drops this year was 12th. So with you know injured riders and all that, he could be moving up. Yeah, but overall 12th, that's just, he hasn't even gotten better than that. So I don't know. The guy's a beast, though. He is. Come Maybe on, this man. weekend things and will Bowers things roll his way. And then the last one we have up here is Josh Grant. So Josh actually got ninth place last week. I didn't see anything about him. Probably I just see the, the most improved rider that I've seen. Yeah. To come off the couch, not racing Supercross, Hasn't really shown any that great of results, and then all of a sudden just gets in our ninth place. So I was actually really impressed with that. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it when I first saw so it. So if he can do a whole main event and get ninth, I think 11th place is right in his wheelhouse. So I like it. What do you guys think? Honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Who do you got? Ben LeMay, Ryan Brees again. Ooh, he might okay. Be, you know, he might be riding something there. And a -Ray. Alex Ray. All yeah. right. But statistically, Watch out for those guys. these are some guys that really work. Mm -hmm. But who are you going to go with this weekend? I'm thinking Chisholm right now. You just said Bowers was your guy. I know, but I switch all the time. <laughs> I'm never going to learn. Oh, my gosh. Well, there it is. That's a wild card watch. But now let's get him on the phone. As we mentioned earlier, Roger Hayden. Icon. Legend. Legend. Legendary family. Yeah, I love it. Here it is. This is Between Two Berms with Roger Hayden. All right, so we got him on the phone. This is Between Two Berms with Roger Hayden. Roger, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Well, hey, thank you so much for calling in. I'm excited about you calling in. MotoGP rider, Superbike Championship. Yep. This is really cool. It's kind of cool to get it from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Now, Roger, you played fantasy before, right? Yeah, I played the uh, the last couple years. I played fantasy, and uh, and then maybe the last four years I've played it four or five, and then the last two years I've actually created my own league with a bunch of buddies at home inside the inside the league where we all throw in some money. <laughs> nice. Now, what, what's your what's your group name called? If somebody wanted to join it, what is it? Uh, oh, it's private. Is it private? Yeah, it's private. It's private yeah. for the... It's invite <laughs> it's only. <laughs> yep. All right, well, we'll find out what it is so people can check it out. And then we'll they might have to, yeah, if you leave it open for the public, but we'll see. <laughs> Maybe next year. Yeah, next year we get some more people in there. 
be fun. <laughs> yep. Now, Roger, you had a long career riding, you know, all different. You wrote, you rode MotoGP. Mm -hmm. You also rode the Superbike World Championships, and you went pro in 16, but you just retired, right? Yes, I just, I went pro in 99, and I just retired this past season. Wow. At the end of 2018, so it's a 20-year run, and uh, was ready to, needed a break and ready to, to move on. You know, a lot of people don't understand you know, I turned pro at 16, but it really mm -hmm. started when I was nine. Yep. So, you know, it's really about 20, 25 or 26 years of spending my whole life just riding and racing motorcycles. Wow. Yep. You know, it's kind of interesting. I've always, <clears throat> me personally, I've always wondered, you know, when it comes to a MotoGP or a Superbike race, the, the tactics or the strategy when you're trying to get around a guy, and I'm sure you probably watch the races, and you can probably relate when these guys are battling so hard, and because mm -hmm. sometimes we as viewers, we think, well, why doesn't he just pass the guy? But you're probably looking at it thinking, it's a lot harder than it looks, oh, am I right? Man, he's passing people at like 120 no, exactly. plus. It's a lot harder than it looks. Because <clears throat> sometimes it might be a guy's bike might be faster, or another guy's bike might handle better in certain situations, so you gotta figure out uh, like your strong suits and you'll see a lot of guys in road racing they follow somebody for a couple laps where they can see where they're stronger and you know once you make the pass i mean you have to fully commit and mm -hmm. it's it's kind of different than you know motocross you get together and the two guys fall down they get back up and they get right back in the race mm -hmm. where in our sport you get together with somebody your race is over yeah yeah it's going a lot faster <laughs> pretty wild now, Roger, so your brother, Nicky Hayden, he's an absolute legend in the sport. I think a lot of people are familiar with that, and unfortunately, he did pass away a few mm -hmm. years ago. We see a lot of riders like Justin Barsha this year. Wore a, he had butt, a butt patch for him. It was pretty cool. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of people who know about your brother, but kind of explain how people can get involved and help out with any sort of foundation that they have for your brother. Yeah, we have the, uh, and yeah, first, I just want to, you know, thank everybody because there has been outpouring support. You know what Justin Barsha did. I mean, that means so much to my parents, and he actually gave me his gear. And wow. you know, it's just cool. they it really means a lot, even though you know might not always show it. But uh, we have a Nikki Hayden Memorial Foundation, and uh, we just started a Instagram for it, where we can keep people updated. We're gonna have. Uh, some auction, a dinner auction in town coming up, and actually Ricky Carmichael's gave me some uh, gave me some gear to, to or is going to give me some gear to auction off. So um, we're trying to keep everybody updated on uh, you know his Memorial Foundation Instagram page and a Facebook page. So uh, and also I always put updates on my Instagram page as well, Roger Hayden ninety five until we really get his that page mm -hmm. up and going so and really what he does is uh you know we give back to the community uh last year we bought a uh, uh a school a van for the boys and girls club so they could go and pick nice. up kids that didn't have a ride uh we bought a backpack program for a whole school so kids could have a backpack and it also came with the where they got food for the whole year that's awesome. So wow. uh, just, just stuff like that, giving back to the community. It, um, it's run out of a place in Louisville for now. It's a third party, so we never, we never see any of the money. And um, you know, Nikki was extremely proud of Owensboro, I and mean, he was the Kentucky kid. So his foundation is uh, set up to to give back to the community and keep his legacy alive. And just like anything else he did, we don't want to. We don't want to half do it. We want to do it mm -hmm. unreal like he did everything or not do one at all. So yep. uh, it's taking a little bit of work, but we're getting it going and keep his legacy alive. Awesome. That's cool. I like to see, you know, the dirt guys, street guys. All it's a together. big community cool. like that. It's pretty and, cool. And Nikki, I think some of my favorite, you know, memories of him is one, in 2006, he won the GP title, mm -hmm. broke up Valentino Rossi's streak. Oh, yeah. And then also when you, Nikki, and your other brother, you guys actually had a podium sweep at a race, which is the first time it's ever been done. Pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. No, that was real cool, especially uh, for my dad because, I mean, as anybody knows, racing's expensive, and he was always saying, <laughs> man, my dream would be if all three of y'all got on the podium together, and it actually happened at a dirt track race where we, 
you know, a professional one. We started out dirt tracking, and uh, hmm. so yeah, it was just that much more special. And, and also, just a second ago, like when you were talking about the road and street guys coming together, that's one of the great things about the racing community. No matter if you are a rival with somebody or not, when tragedy happens, everybody comes together, and I hmm. think it's one reason why racing is such a really a tight knit community. Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. All right, well, thanks for that information on that, Roger. So now, let's talk about fantasy. We've got two <laughs> rounds left so far in the season. <laughs> yeah. How have you been doing? How have your picks How's been it going looking? For you? I, I'm not doing too good this year. I've been riding the uh, uh, Eli Tomai train all year. I know. Couldn't get on the web bandwagon, so I'm <laughs> at, the bottom, at the bottom end. And then a couple weeks ago, I uh, took... Eli out of my top spot, and he won. Of course. I'm actually friends with the team manager, Kawasaki there, Dan Fahey, and I see him a text and <laughs> told him we can negotiate next week whether or not I put Eli on the top spot. Oh, that's well, awesome. Yeah, your, your, your sense is finally tell you to do the right thing and not put Tom oh, Mack in first, and then what does he do? He wins two races in a row. And who knows? I it's think he's going to win again seasons. this weekend. We'll see. Yeah. But we got two rounds left. Do you think Tomac or Marv, do you think they have a shot at Cooper, or do you think Cooper just, he's too good this year, he's got it under control, or do you think anything could happen? What do you think? I mean, anything can always happen, but, I mean, if I had to bet on it, I'm saying Cooper's going to win it yeah. because he just always, all year, has put himself in the right spot. He gets a good start. Um, he settled for third one race. Uh, he doesn't. He takes his time, like the last race, and then caught Marvin at the end, mm -hmm. got his way, keeping himself out of trouble. So I think, uh, I don't know, I've never seen a guy really mature so much from one year to the next like yeah. he has this season. So I, I think he's got it. I mean, he's he's doing all the right stuff. Right on. Yeah, I'd yeah, agree. No, I don't think yeah. anybody saw Webb doing this this year. So it's been pretty awesome to watch. And, I don't know why there's so many web haters out there. I feel like there's so many people that hate it, but I think it's because he's he's destroying he's a, the hopes and dreams of the Tomac fans. He's just so. unapologetically him. <laughs> I don't think people that like that. That is true. Well, Roger, so for this weekend, give us your podium. Who do you have in mind right now? I'm going to Eli. All right. Marvin, and then, uh, then Webb. All right. Like Eli, Marv, Webb. We need yeah. Tomac to win. All right. I think Webb, I definitely don't think he's going to put up too much of a fight if those two guys are pressuring him or putting, you know, or they're maybe just faster for the weekend. But like Webb showed last week, though, if he can catch you, he's going to make a run for it. I almost feel like he wants to lock it up before Vegas. So. That's true. All right. So Tomac, Muska, and Webb, those are your top three, huh? I like that podium. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. I like, I like your thinking there. One more quick question. Real quick. It's not 450s, but we got to talk about it because the 250 classes right now are just unreal. Give us your 250 West and your 250 East winner real quick. Uh, I'm thinking Pro Circuit does the sweep. Ooh, uh, Forkner's depends on, hurt on knee. Uh, um, Forkner and his Forkner's knee? knee. Forkner and his knee, though. I mean, yeah. that could be, you know, I, I thought I read somewhere it might have been like an ACL or something. I don't mm -hmm. know how you could ride a motocross bike with that, but... He's tough, so I just think they're both riding really well, him and uh, AC. So I think they're going to pull it off, and Pro Circuit's going to do the double. The green sweep. Right on. I like it, the green sweep. All right, Roger. Well, hey, man, best of luck to all your endeavors out there. One more time, thanks so much for calling in. Remember, you guys out there are watching, go to the Nikki uh, Hayden Foundation and see how you guys can help out there. Mm -hmm. All right, Roger. Well, it was good talking to you. And best of luck on your picks this weekend. Yeah, me. hopefully we hear back from you. All right, we'll talk to you soon. <clears throat> All right, see you. All right, bye. That's Roger. just a prestigious family right there. That That's is, cool. dude. I'm stoked. I never thought I'd be able to talk to Roger <laughs> no, Hayden. No, me neither. That was pretty cool to see. Well, you guys have seen it, remember? Nikki Hayden, the dude was an absolute legend. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of reading and research on the guy, and... I mean, he's just a really He cool likes dude. to go fast. <laughs> I think the whole family likes to go fast. But you've yeah. seen his podium for the weekend. What do you guys think? Does he have it right? Because that's what we're going to talk about next because you know what time it is. Time to lock him in. Let's do it. Okay, this week I'm going for broke. I need points to make up. I feel bad. I'm holding the team back. I'm going Cooper Webb to win. He's been solid on the East. He, I know he wants to lock this thing down before Vegas. Eli Tomac, I know, can pass everyone else with the ease right now. Putting him in second. Blake Baggett, solid East Coast rider, third. Savachi, fourth. Marvin, I just lost all faith in him after last week. Fifth. 
Kyle Chisholm wild card as of now. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to have Tomac three-peat, and I think the momentum's with him. Cooper Webb. Uh, I'm going to go Blake Baggett second place. I think the beast from the east that he's, you like to call him, yeah, even though he's him. originally from California. And he's not the original beast from the east. No, not Damon Bradshaw. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go Baggett <clears throat> second. I'm going to go Cooper Webb third. And I'm going to go Marvin Muscan fourth. And then I'm going to go Joey so Savage fifth. making a KTM so sandwich same here. Same top five as last week. Or everyone except Baggett. Mm -hmm. You're putting him in there. I just totally confuse that. Close to the same top five. No Bogle, that's what I meant yeah. to say. And then Chisholm, he is out. <laughs> and I just got a hunch. Don't have a lot of stats, but I think Josh Grant JG slides right into that wild card spot. I like it. There I, it is. I can't argue with you, so. Well, there it is. Those are our picks. They are locked in. What do you guys think? How's the championship going to shake down? I'm also excited to watch the 250s. Yeah, that's going to be wild. Got to admit it. But what do you guys think? Who do you guys have in your top five? Who's the wild card spot for this week? But now, let's talk about why you want to be playing fantasy each and every week. Here it is, the surprise recap. All right, so before we do our prize recap, do not forget, this Friday and Saturday only, we have our discount offer code ARCMX10. Get 10% off all ARC socks. All the AMR ARCMX socks. Yep. We all know that for you young guns out there, if your mom ain't washing your laundry, you're probably not doing it, so get some extra laundry or some socks in the bag. Exactly. I like it. All right, weekly prizes. First place, Cylinder Works Big Bore Cylinder Kit and Supercross to the video game. Second place, Bell Motor 9 Carbon Flex. I have one, they rock. Mm -hmm. Third place, two sets of Pirelli MX-32 mid to hard tires. Then we got a Cherubis, Pro Honda, ASV levers, Fox Shuttle Roller gear bag, Rhino Power gold metal package, Fly Casual spending spree, ODI CFT podium handlebars, and some lock-on grips. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, <coughs> 90 Rocky Mountain ATVMC gift cards. 100 prizes this week alone. Don't miss out. All right, what about grand prizes? For the day ones, uh, grand prizes this year, first place is going to get a race prep KTM 450 SXF. Second place, race prep, KTM 250. Then other prizes like a Moab Red Rock getaway plus generator, Monster Energy Cup trip, Dunlop Brock Glover Legend Ride, Fly Racing Gear and Casual Package, Milestone Video Game, Supercross to the Game, Console and 4K TV, Motion Pro Tools, Tusk Impact Wheel Set, and Oakley Goggles and Sunglasses. So big prizes up for grabs. That's right. And remember, if you, even if you haven't played the entire year, Go to armfancysx.com, create your account, make your picks, and you could still win a weekly prize. But also, don't forget, Christian, dropping points for low rounds. Yeah, what do they need this, to know about that. This, after this round, you will drop your lowest scoring round. After the final round, you'll drop one more. So don't freak out if your points look a little weird at first. How stressed out on. is the top of the leaderboard right now? Mega, I'm sure. We need to reach out and try to get yeah, one of those guys. Yeah, we're going to be talking there. to some of you guys next week, so stay put. But there it is. I am Chase. I'm Christian. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.